Hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demiable Bimmy. And I'm dead inside. And welcome back to another episode of Persinger. You look kind of disgusted there for a second. I almost puked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> too much Chinese food. No, too much pizza. You monster. I didn't have pizza for dinner. <laughs> Give us a recap, Demi. Don't mind if I do. Dun 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 dun. That's the theme music for your your recap. Do you like it? It was great. Okay, so um, the elves came, and one of the elves is a blue wolf, and he had pheromones, and Nazawada said, "Oh boy," and then Garmin, uh, whatever his name is. Garmin uh, talked or uh, touched the brains and now he's dying and he's a simpleton. She's going to have to put him on other tasks. And um, wow, no one's ever seen this many elves before. And that's it. I don't really know what else. Stop. You're done. Boop. <laughs> Excellent recap. As <laughs> always need a little outro song too. Da 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 da. Damn it, that's a song. It went from like um, American football sort of esque music to like NFL to like Zelda. Star Trek. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> beep, 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 boop, 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 beep, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Chapter 12. Mercy, Dragon Rider. <gasps> Mercy from Aragon Dragon Rider? Or Mercy from Ormish Dragon Rider? Mercy from Murtag Dragon Rider? <laughs> it made me feel like I wanted to say Senpai after that. I don't know if it's all the Japanese talk <clears throat> or what. It was mid-afternoon, the day after they had les- left Eastcroft when Murtag sent the patrol. No, when Aragon sends a patrol of 15 soldiers ahead of them. He mentioned it to Arya, and she nodded. I noticed them as well. Neither he nor she voiced any concerns, but Warby began to gnaw at Aragon's belly, and he saw how Arya's eyebrows lowered into a fierce frown. The land around them was open and flat, devoid of any cover. They had encountered groups of soldiers before, but always in the company of other travelers, now they were alone on the faint trail of a road. They're in North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a joke. They said they were outside of East Croft. Well, obviously they're not in North Dakota. North Dakota doesn't exist in this universe. We could d- dig a hole with magic, cover the top with the brush, and hide in it until they leave, said Aragon, like they do in Minecraft. <laughs> You know, the hole strategy, hole strat. You dig a hole and you just hide in the hole until daylight. I mean, I'm not really like a <clears throat> Minecraft player, so I didn't know that was like a strat. Me neither. I've never will. played it before in my life. <laughs> <clears throat> Arya shook her head without breaking stride. What would we do with the excess dirt? They think they had discovered the biggest badger den in existence. Besides, I would rather save our energy for running, Aragon grunted. I'm not sure how many more miles I have left in me. He was not winded, but the relentless pounding was wearing him down. His knees hurt, his ankles were sore, his left big toe was red and swollen, and blisters continued to break out on his heels, no matter how tightly he bound them. The previous night, he had healed several of the aches and pains troubling him, and while that had provided a measure of relief, the spells only exacerbated his exhaustion. Like, damn, Arya. <clears throat> She gonna do anything? She gonna help him? What do you mean? He's like heal him, heal him up. Well, I'm just saying because she's like, oh, we can't stop, and like poor like Aragon, like he's still like a human, you know, and she's like, fuck it. Just feel like, cut him some slack. Yeah, like relax, like just take a break, take a day off of running. Not, not like hang out. Don't fucking move, dude. Just lay there like a slug. (laughs) Dude, they got to get the fuck out. They're why in the she empire, just, dude. Why doesn't she just put him Asleep on her back? And carry him. Just like like a little backpack, like a little Aragon backpack. That'd be cute. 
<laughs> they just run all the way home. Yeah, totally. Because there's no wear and tear on Arya's feet. She's an elf. Yeah, they don't get wear and tear no, at all, ever. They, don't. they never exhaust. They never. Like, how do you know she's not just as worn out? She's not bitching and moaning about it. We're also not hearing inside of her head. You know, we're not getting that monologue from her. That's true. We're not monologue. I still think that she should put Aragon on her back like a little backpack. Yeah, that'd be cute. (laughs) Or just like on her shoulders. And she's like, you doing all right up there? (laughs) The patrol was visible as a plume of dust for half an hour before Aragon was able to make out the shapes of the men and the horses at the base of the yellow cloud. Since he and Arya had keener eyesight than most humans, it was unlikely the horsemen could see them at that distance. So they continued to run for another ten minutes. Then they stopped. Arya removed her skirt from her pack and tied it over the leggings she wore while running. And Aragon stored Brom's ring in his own pack and smeared dirt over his right palm to hide his silvery Gedway Ignacia. They resumed their journey with bowed heads, hunched shoulders, and dragging feet. If all went well, the soldiers would assume they were just another pair of refugees. Although Aragon could feel the rumble of approaching hoofbeats, and hear the cries of the men driving their steeds, still took the better part of an hour for their two groups to meet on the vast plain. When they did, Aragon and Arya moved off the road and stood looking down between their feet. Aragon caught a glimpse of horse legs from under the edge of his brow as the first few riders pounded past, but then the choking dust billowed over him, obscuring the rest of the patrol. The dirt in the air was so thick, he had to close his eyes. Listening carefully, he counted until he was sure that more than half of the patrol had gone by, They're not going to bother questioning us, he thought. His elation was short-lived. A moment later, someone in the swirling blizzard of dust shouted, Company, halt! I just imagine it being like the military. We're like, hey! (laughs) Hey! You know? Yeah. I mean, it probably would have been. No. Yeah. No. I don't know why I just imagined, um, oh my god, what is his name? General Armstrong? It's too beautiful. Passed down from generation from the Armstrong line. <laughs> a chorus of, whoa, steady there, and hey there, nails, <laughs> rang out as the 15 men coaxed their mounts to form a circle around Aragon and Arya. Before the soldiers completed their maneuver and the air cleared, Aragon pawed the ground for a large pebble, then stood back up. Pawed the ground, so he's like... It's like searching. Got one. There. <laughs> Be still, hissed Arya. While he waited for the soldiers to make their intentions known, Aragon strove to calm his racing heart by rehearsing the story he and Arya had concocted to explain their presence so close to the border with Serta. His efforts failed, for notwithstanding his strength, or his strength, <laughs> his training, the knowledge of the battles he had won, and the half dozen wards protecting him, His flesh remained convinced that imminent injury or death awaited him. His gut twisted, his throat constricted, and his limbs were light and unsteady. Oh, get on with it, he thought. He longed to tear something apart with his hands, as if an act of destruction would relieve the pressure building inside of him. But the urge only heightened his frustration, for he dared not move. The one thing that steadied him was Arya's presence. He would sooner cut off a hand than have her consider him a coward, and although she was a mighty warrior in her own right, He still felt the desire to defend her. The voice that had ordered the patrol to halt again issued forth. Let me see your faces. Raising his head, Aragon saw a man sitting before them on a roan charger. His gloved hands folded over the pommel of a saddle. Upon his upper lip, there sprouted an enormous curly mustache that after descending to the corners of his mouth, extended a good nine inches in either direction and was in stark contrast to the straight hair that fell to his shoulders. How such a massive piece of sculpted foliage supported its own weight, puzzled Aragon, especially since it was dull and lusterless and obviously had not been impregnated with warm beeswax. Oh. Okay. <sighs> Little fucking grooming tips from Aragon. <laughs> he, can you grow a beard? Aragon? Yeah. No. What, what, what does he know? Well, maybe now. Well, by now he can grow a full beard. Wait. Because remember, Ormus was like, get that patchy leaf shit out of here. Oh, yeah, huh? <clears throat> but he had said that 
he had to shave in the morning, meeting with Oramis after the transformation, because even though, like, he looked like an elf, he still retained the ability to grow hair. Oh, yeah. But, like, maybe it's been long enough now that he can just, like, grow a full beard. Hmm. Definitely an underbeard. The other soldiers held spears pointed at Aragon and Arya. So much dirt covered them, it was impossible to see the flame stitched on their tunics. Now then, said the man with his... Now then, said the man, and his mustache wobbled like an unbalanced set of scales. Who are you? Where are you going? What is your business in the king's lands? Then he waved a hand. No, don't bother answering. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters nowadays. The world is coming to an end, and we waste our days interrogating peasants. Bah! Superstitious vermin who scurry from place to place, devouring all the food in the land and reproducing at a ghastly rate. At my family's estate near Urubayan, we would have the likes of you flogged if we caught you wandering around without permission. And if we learned that you had stolen from your master, why, then we'd hang you. Whatever you want to tell me is lies. It always is. What have you got in that pack of yours, eh? Food and blankets? Yes, but maybe a pair of gold candlesticks, eh? Silverware from a locked chest? Secret letters for the Varden? Eh? Cat got your tongue? Well, we'll soon sort the matter out. Langward, why don't you see what treasures you can excavate from yonder knapsack. There's a good boy. Aragon staggered forward as one of the soldiers struck him across the back with the haft of a spear. He had wrapped his armor in rags to keep the pieces from rubbing against each other. The rags, uh, the rags however, were too thin to entirely absorb the force of the blow and muffled the clang of metal. Oh, ho! exclaimed the man with the mustache. Grabbing Aragon from behind, the soldier unlaced the top of his pack and pulled out his hauberk saying, Look, sir! I just imagine, like, an, a peon from, <laughs> from World of Warcraft. Warcraft being like, More work? Look, sir. <laughs> the man with the mustache broke out in a delighted green. That mustachioed menace. Ooh. Armor. And a fine make as well. Very fine, I should say. Well, you are full of surprises. Going to join the Varden, were you? Intent on treason and sedition? Mmm? Mmm? His ex- mm. Mm. His expression soured. Or are you one of those who generally give honest soldiers a bad name? If so, you are a most incompetent mercenary. You don't even have a weapon. Was it too much trouble to cut yourself a staff or a club, eh? Well, how about it? Answer me. No, sir. No, sir? Didn't occur to you, I suppose? It's a pity we have to accept such low, slow-minded wretches. But that's what this blasted war has reduced us to. Scrounging for leftovers. Accept me where, sir? Silence, you insolent rascal. No one gave you permission to speak. His mustache quivering, the man gestured. Red lights exploded across Aragon's field of vision as a soldier behind him bashed him on the head. Whether you are a thief, a traitor, a mercenary, or merely a fool, your fate will be the same. Once you swear the oath of service, you'll have no choice but to obey Galbatorix and those who speak for him. We are the first army in history to be free of dissent. No mindless blathering about what we should do, only orders, clear and direct. You too shall join our cause, and you shall have the, pr the privilege of helping to make real the glorious future our great king has foreseen. As, you f as for your lovely companion, there are other ways she can be of use to the Empire, eh? Now tie them up. Aragon knew then what he had to do. Glancing over, he found Arya already looking at him, her eyes hard and bright. He blinked once. She blinked in return. I'm fucking panicking. His hand tightened around the pebble. Most of the soldiers Aragon had fought on the burning plains had possessed certain rudimentary wards intended to shield them from magical attacks, and he suspected these men were likewise equipped. He was confident he could break or circumvent any spells Galbatorix's magicians invented, but it, would, but it would require more time than he had now. Or than he now had. Instead, he cocked his arm, and with a flick of his wrist threw the pebble at the man with the mustache, the pebble punctured the side of his helm. Before the soldiers could react, Aragon twisted around, yanked the spear from the hands of the man who had been tormenting him, and used it to knock him off his horse. As the man landed, Aragon stabbed him through the heart, breaking the blade of the spear on the metal plates of the soldier's gamson. Releasing the spear, Aragon dove backward, his body parallel with the ground as he passed underneath seven spears that were flying toward where he had been. The lethal shaft seemed to float above him as he fell. The instant Aragon had released the pebble, Arya, Arya bounded up the side of the horse nearest her, jumping from stirrup to saddle, and kicked the head of the oblivious soldier who was perched on the mare. 
He went hurtling more than 30 feet. Then Arya leapt from the back of horse to horse, killing the soldiers with her knees, her feet, and her hands in an incredible display of grace and balance. Jagged, rock, jagged rocks tore at Aragorn's stomach as he tumbled to a stop. Grimacing, he sprang upright. Four soldiers who had dismounted confronted him with drawn swords. They charged, dodging to the right. He caught the first soldier's wrist as a man swung his sword and punched him in the armpit. The man collapsed and was still. Aragorn dispatched the next opponents by twisting their heads <clears throat> until their spine snapped. The fourth soldier was so close by then, running at him with sword held high, Aragorn could not evade him. Trapped, he did the one thing he could. He struck the man in the chest with all his might. A fount of blood and sweat erupted as his fist connected. The blow, staved the, the blow staved in the man's ribs and propelled him more than a dozen feet over the grass, where he fetched up against another corpse. Aragorn gasped and doubled over, cradling his throbbing hand. Four of his knuckles were disjointed, and white cartilage showed through his mangled skin. Oh, my fucking god. Blast, he thought, as hot blood poured from the wounds. His fingers refused to move when he ordered them, too. He realized that his hand would be useless until he could heal it. Fearing another attack, he looked around for Arya and the rest of the soldiers. The horses had scattered. Only three soldiers remained alive. Arya was grappling with two of them some distance away, while the third and final soldier fled along, fled south along the road. Gathering his strength, strength, <laughs> gathering his strength, Aragorn pursued him. As he narrowed the gap between them, the man began to plead for mercy, promising he would tell no one about the massacre and holding out his hands to show they were empty. When Aragorn was within arm's reach, the man veered to the side, and then a few steps later changed direction again, darting back and forth across the countryside like a frightened, frightened jackrabbit. All the while, the man continued to beg, tears streaming down his cheeks, then saying that he was too young to die and that he had yet to marry and father a child, and his parents would miss him. That, that was just like a weird, like, yet to marry and father a child, but there's like a comma after that, like, creating a list, mm -hmm. and so like... When he says, like, marry and father a child, it's like, marry a child and father a child, <laughs> you know? Like the Oxford comma, yeah. or like, whatever the fuck. That his parents would miss him, and that he had been pressed into the army, and this was only his fifth mission, and why couldn't Aragorn leave him alone? What have you against me, he sobbed. I only did what I had to. I'm a good person. Aragorn paused and forced himself to say, you can't keep up with us. We can't leave you. You'll, you'll catch a horse and betray us. No, I won't. People will ask what happened here. Your, or your oath to Galbatorix and the Empire won't let you lie. I'm sorry, but I don't know how to release you from your bond, except... Why are you doing this? You're a monster! screamed the man. With an expression of pure terror, he made an attempt to dash around Aragorn and return to the road. Aragorn overtook him in less than ten feet, and as the man was still crying and asking for clemency, Aragorn wrapped his left hand around his neck and squeezed. Then he relaxed his grip. The, the soldier fell across his feet, dead. Bile coated Aragorn's tongue as he stared down at the man's slack face. Whenever we kill, we kill a part of ourselves, he thought. Okay, took that right from the art of war. Or the art of peace. One of the two. It's like literally like almost verbatim. Probably the art of war. That's the book title of a book that I know of. Yeah, there's two. Oh. There's the art of war and the art of peace. One's about war. One's about peace. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Shaking with a combination of shock, pain, and self-loathing. He walked back to where the fight had begun. Arya was kneeling beside a body, washing her hands and arms with water from a tin flask one of the soldiers had been carrying. How is it? asked Arya. You could kill that man, but you could not bring yourself to lay a finger on Sloane. Oof. She stood and faced him, her gaze frank. Devoid of emotion, he shrugged. He was a threat. Sloane wasn't. Isn't it obvious? Arya was quiet for a while. It ought to be, but it isn't. I'm an... I am ashamed to be instructed morality by one with so much less experience. Perhaps I have been too certain, too confident of my own choices. Aragorn heard her speak, but the words meant nothing to him. As his gaze drifted over the corpses, is this all my life has become, he wondered, a never-ending series of battles? I feel like a murderer. I understand how difficult this is, said Arya. Remember, Aragorn, you have experienced only a small part of what it means to be a dragon rider. Eventually, this war will end, and you will see that your duties encompass more than violence. The riders were not just warriors. They were teachers, healers, and scholars. His jaw muscles nodded for a moment. Why are we fighting these men, Arya? 
because they stand between us and Galbatorix. Then we should find a way to strike at Galbatorix directly. None exist. We cannot march to Urubain until we defeat his forces, and we cannot enter his castle until we disarm almost a century's worth of traps, magical and otherwise. There has to be a way, he muttered. He remained where he was as Arya strode forward and picked up a spear. But when she placed the tip of the spear under the chin of a slain soldier and thrust it into his skull, Aragorn sprang toward her and pushed her away from the body. What are you doing? he shouted. <clears throat> Anger flashed across Arya's face. I will forgive that only because you are distraught and not of your right mind. Think, Aragorn. It is too late in the day for anyone to be coddling you. Why is this necessary? The answer presented itself to him and he grudgingly said, If we don't, the Empire will notice that most of the men were killed by hand. Exactly. The only ones capable of such a feat are elves, riders, and coal. And since even an imbecile could figure out a coal was not responsible for this, they'll soon know we are in the area, and in less than a day, Thorn and Murtag will be flying overhead searching for us. There was a wet squelch as she pulled the spear out of the body. She held it out to him until he accepted it. I find this as repulsive as, re I find this as, repulsive as you do, so you might as well make yourself useful and help. <clears throat> Aragon nodded. Then Arya scavenged a sword, and together... They set out to make it appear as if a troop of ordinary warriors had killed the soldiers. It was grisly work, but it went quickly, for they both knew exactly what kinds of wounds the soldiers should have to ensure the success of the deception, and neither of them wished to linger. When they came to the man whose chest Aragon had destroyed, Arya said, There's little we can do to disguise an injury like that. We'll have to leave it as it is and hope people assume a horse stepped on him. They moved on. The last soldier they dealt with was the commander of the patrol. His mustache was now limp and torn. It had lost most of its former splendor. After enlarging the pebble hole so it more closely resembled the triangular pit left by the spike of a war hammer, Aragon rested for a moment, contemplating the commander's sad mustache, then said, He was right, you know. About what? I need a weapon. A proper weapon. I need a sword. Wiping his palms on the edge of his tunic, he surveyed the plain around them, counting the bodies. That's in. That's it, then, isn't it? We're done. He went and collected his scattered armor, rewrapped it in cloth, and returned it to the bottom of his pack. Then he joined Arya on the low hill hillock she had climbed. We had best avoid the roads from now on, she said. We cannot risk another encounter with Galbatorix's men. Indicating his deformed right hand, which stained his tunic with blood, she said, You should tend to that before we set forth. She gave him no time to respond, but grasped his paralyzed fingers and said, Why is that hell? An involuntary groan escaped him as his fingers popped back into their sockets, and as he, and as his abraded tendons and crushed cartilage regained the fullness of their proper shapes, and as the flaps of skin hanging around his knuckles again covered the raw flesh below. When the spell ended, he opened and closed his hand to confirm that it was fully cured. Thank you, he said. It surprised him that she had taken the initiative when he was perfectly capable of healing his own wounds. Arya seemed embarrassed. Looking away, out over the plains, she said, I'm glad you were by my side today, Aragon. And you by mine. She favored him with a quick, uncertain smile. They lingered on the hillock for another minute, neither of them eager to resume their journey. Then Arya sighed and said, We should be off. The shadows lengthen, and someone else is bound to appear and raise a hue and a cry or raise a hue and cry when they discover the crow's feast. Abandoning the hillock, they oriented themselves in a southwesterly direction, angling away from the road, and loped out across the uneven sea of grass. Behind them, the first of the carrion eaters dropped from the sky. <clears throat> so what do you think of that little... Um, I know... So, like, I feel like I understand, like, what Arya is saying. Like, he was so... Oh, wow. No way. Look in the index and see. It is, isn't it? What in the fuck? It's like a 40-page chapter. Okay, not tonight. No, that's from 80, 90 to 20. So 30. But fucking A, dude. Yikes, what a short episode, guys. Whoa. What? That was, like, actually really short. It was to the point, though, I feel like. Pun intended. I don't get it. Stabbing people. 
<laughs> I mean, I got it. Don't tell. Don't lie then. Don't lie to me. Oh my god. Do you hear my ankle pop like twelve times? I heard it twice. I didn't <laughs> hear the other ten. <laughs> the next chapters, or next chapter, it should be chapters. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was a spot where they could have, he, they, whatever, could have divided it into two chapters, but he didn't. He thought. But the next <clears throat> next coming, the next part is super good. But, I mean, what we read was okay. Um, Got a little, a little skirmish. Got to learn that, like, the soldiers have to do a, like, a oath of enlistment in the ancient language. Yeah, and they make that's, everyone they come across do it. That's fucking crazy. That's, like, desperation. I feel like, you know? That feels like... Because if you were confident in your power, you wouldn't need to scrounge up soldiers or make every single person, like, swear an oath. Well, didn't they say that he was also getting paranoid or something? Yeah. Like, to me, that's, like, something <coughs> is, like, up. Something is, like, there's a weakness in the defenses. Like, whether it's, like, he he's desperate out of like necessity because there's not enough people or he's like desperate out of paranoia. Like there's a weakness there when you have like your soldiers walking around Allegasia being like, Oh, got to scrounge <clears throat> up soldiers. Like just like literally taking whoever the fuck is there, clapping mm -hmm. them in irons, taking them back to wherever they got to take them to do the ancient language administration and then right. or administer the ancient language or have them say it or whatever. And then like bada bing, bada boom. Like you are now, a soldier of Galbatorix and you don't have a choice. <clears throat> I do like the, uh, how Aragon, when she's like, how is it that you can kill that man, but you can't kill like the other person. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, very simply like, well, one was a threat. One was not a threat. Isn't that obvious? And she's like, <laughs> cause like you feel like <clears throat> up until that point, you kind of like side more with Arya you're like, you should have just killed Sloan, you know? Hold on. Remember when Murtag killed the slaver guy? Like, just killed him. Yeah. And Aragorn's like, <coughs> well, we don't know that he was going to be a bad guy. How did he know? How did he know that that slaver may or may not, like, how could he have just been like, oh, maybe he's not a threat. Like, that guy was, like, definitely a threat. The slaver? Yeah. Like, I don't understand the, like, <clears throat> distinction well, he for was Aragon. Like, he was defenseless, right? And mm -hmm. he had no knowledge that that dude had ever, like, said the oath in the ancient language and was bound mm -hmm. by the ancient language type of thing. I guess. So, like... At that point, like, <clears throat> even though the slaver could have done an oath in the ancient language, Aragon wasn't, like, didn't know about it. So that's not a threat to Aragon, at least, like, in his mind. Yeah, I guess that's the biggest thing that I'm kind <clears throat> of, like, forgetting about is the oath. And so Aragon sees this dude as a threat, and it's, like, pretty cut and dry for him. And I like that Arya was able, because, like, really up to that point, you're kind of, like, on Arya's side, you're like, you should have just fucking killed Sloane. You should, like, mm -hmm. whatever. Like, everyone's saying, like, you should have just done this. But then, like, he's able to, like, very simply black and white say, like, threat versus no threat. Like, like super basic, like, survival skills. Like, mm -hmm. like me small brain sense no threat. Me, me small brain sense big threat. Mm -hmm. Like, me kill. <clears throat> and then Arya's like, <laughs> you're right. Like, I should have. You're fucking right. Like, I should have. I should have seen that. I just made me feel so bad that he was just like begging for his life. And then I just, I mean, like I know Aragon feels bad about it, but it just felt like so heartless, I guess when he's supposed to like, how could you be so heartless? <laughs> but he's supposed to be this fucking moral on this moral fucking high ground all the goddamn time. And then this poor guy is like, probably in his early 20s. You know, like, he's not married. 
doesn't have kids in this time frame, probably early 20s. So it's like he's young and Aragon's like, sorry, dude. Sorry, you threat. Pew, pew, pew. <clears throat> you threat me kill. I mean, at least it was quick. He basically hugged him. Hugged him to death. I guess if I was going to go. <laughs> you want to be hugged to death? Yeah. I'd want some, like, wild shit to happen. Like, I get thrown into a different dimension or, like, through a wormhole or something, you know? Or, like, incinerate, not incinerated, but, like, with lasers or something, like, or fucking, you know, like, something crazy. I mean, I wouldn't want anything crazy to happen because, like, I wouldn't want something, like, to <clears throat> hurt. Like, I would just want to just go and be gone. I almost don't care about it hurting because, I mean, existence is pain. But <laughs> okay, <clears throat> like it would it'd just be so cool. It'd be like a cool experience to like go out in a fucking crazy way. Yeah, but like you wouldn't remember it. But you would experience it. And then it wouldn't matter. Because you wouldn't like. Because your experiences don't matter if you're not around to remember it. I guess to other people it would matter. <sighs> Maybe. They'd to be me, like, holy shit. be like the last thing I experienced. Right. It'd be bonkers. It'd be wild. I guess it's weird to imagine, like, not thinking anything. It's an interesting train of thought, because then it's like, well, I mean, we're eventually not going to exist anyway, so fucking nothing matters. And that's where that existential dread sets in. Well, I'm not saying, like, nothing matters. It's just, like... Well, eventually we're not going to remember it anyway, so... Well, like, the cool effect, I feel like I'd rather, like, instead of going out in a painful way, the last moments of my life, I'd like to be comfortable... And not it like doesn't matter, in though, pain. It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. Like in the end, it doesn't, doesn't even, even matter. matter. Bing, bong, bong. This is weird. Okay, I need to stop. Goes from like Aragon being right all along to nothing matters in the <laughs> end. What a fucking conversation! Aragon does need a sword. Who's gonna give him that sword? Who do you think? I want it to be Runon. That's her name, right? Yeah. That's why I want it to be. But she made an oath. But maybe he doesn't get a sword. What if he doesn't get a sword at all? And she's like, I'm not going to make swords. Bing, bong, bong. And then she's like, well, I could make you an axe. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and he's just like out there wielding like two bearded axes. Fing, 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 fing. Nah, Roar would have an axe. Two bearded axes. Fing, 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 fing. So there'd be a total of three beards? Yes. Mm. You can never have enough beards. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Just a quick moment for a shameless plug. You guys should check out patreon.com slash dead inside. Become a Patreon today. Well, I mean, you could become a Patreon, but specifically become a dead inside patron. What do you get? You might ask yourself if you become a patron. What do you get? Thanks for asking. <laughs> you get access to our Discord recording room where we record in the room what like this but you get to hear it live and you get to talk with everybody before and after and you also get to listen to it early so if you miss out on the recording room it still posts a patreon early how much does that cost like three bucks wow that's, that's it quite the steal <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, there's different tiers, so go check it out. Don't take my word for it. Well, do, but <laughs> like, go check it out. I mean, like, if becoming a patron isn't your thing, still check out the Discord. That's free and fun. We have, like, 100 members. 12 of them are active. <laughs> <laughs> like, right now? No. Oh. Just, like, in general. That's not true. Like, tw like 20, to, 20 to 30. Max. 
Not we have a hundred. We have a hundred members. Just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Links are in the description. So, oh, we also have a new Facebook group page thing mm. on Facebook. Obviously, <laughs> it's called Dead Inside Dead Dead Inside Fiends. There's a link for that too. So many links. So many places for you to go. So many places for you to stay engaged with this community. It's a thing. See you in the next one. <laughs> Ew. Don't do that to me. <laughs> um, How could you be so heartless? I don't know what to say right now.